Amazing new time zone and reality, everyone. My name is Belle here at Science Way, and today we have another. Let me grab it. 4D Vision Anatomy Set by Fay Master. Now, if you remember, I did the frog one uh, in December of last year or in January of this year. I forgot one. But they had a frog one, which was the first one. So, Fay Master has several, not several, they have tons of these anatomy kits. I think the anatomy of creatures is amazing. It's really interesting to me. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to add another one to the birthday list. And here it is for the Brachiosaurus. Now, just to clarify, this is not sponsored by Fame Master at all. This was something I got on my own. They didn't send this to me. I don't even know my channel exists at the moment. So it's not sponsored, all right? And I plan to collect, I'm lying if I said some of them, I plan to collect all of them, okay? Because not only do they have dinosaurs, they have insects. I'm not going to get tarantula, you, for, you can forget that. Not a scorpion either. I'm going to do some other ones though. Uh, they have some uh, amphibians and uh, what was, what do you call it? Aquatic, there we go, aquatic animals. Some of those, they, ha they have some land animals. And then you have the human body. So I plan to get probably all of them, like I said. So, but today we're doing the Brachiosaurus one. It looked like the biggest one they had. So, you know, because it's a Brachiosaurus, I was like, let's get this one. This would be awesome. So this is the, the front of the box. So to make sure it's in shot here. Some of the pieces. And this is the back. So there's a part list now. If you remember the frog video, I was reading some things and I had a little bit of trouble pronouncing some words because I had never seen them before. I am going to continue reading these and putting the words words up on screen because I want this to be an educational video because this I think is genius. Having the anatomy of different creatures and animals and insects is amazing and I think it should be very educational and I want to read this for those who don't have the kit and want to make sure it's worth it. So I am going to continue reading stuff even if I don't know how to pronounce it. Like I said, I'm going to put the words on screen because there are some times I've seen the word and don't know how it's said or I've heard the word and don't know how it's spelled. I'm sure everyone goes through that. So we're going to learn together. Hey everyone, Vel here in editing. And I decided to scrap the part where I'm reading everything on the box and then on the instructions because this video turned out to be almost an hour, literally seven minutes shy of an hour. So I'm not doing that. Instead, I've looked up the words I don't know how to pronounce and I now know how to pronounce them. And I'm still going to read them, but I'm going to read them over the assembly video before I had just read them separately. And then you saw me assembling stuff. So like I said, that took forever. This will be a lot faster. Hopefully you all enjoy this format more. Let me know in the comments below if this is definitely better or if I need to go and change something, do a different format, let me know. But first we're gonna start, start off with the information about Brachiosaurus. Brachiosaurus is one of the largest dinosaurs of all time. Unlike most of other dinosaurs, the front legs of Brachiosaurus were much longer than the hind legs. That's why they called it Brachiosaurus. It means arm lizard. Brachiosaurus was a huge, long-necked herbivorous dinosaur that lived during the late Jurassic period, around 156 to 145 million years ago, in the area of Colorado, North America, Tanzania, Africa, and perhaps Portugal, Europe. The length of Brachiosaurus has been estimated at 24 to 26 meters, or 80 to 85 feet, and it weighs 33 to 88 tons. The genus Brachiosaurus and type species B, Altithrax, are based on a partial postcranial skeleton from Fruta in the valley of the Colorado River of western Colorado. This specimen was collected from rocks of the brushy basin member of the Morrison Formation in the 1900s by Elmer S. Riggs and his crew from the Field Columbian Museum of Chicago. Like all other sauropod dinosaurs, Brachiosaurus had a small head, a long neck, a large trunk with a high ellipsoid cross-section, a long muscular tail, and slender columnar limbs. Brachiosaurus needed a large and powerful heart to pump the blood at a very high pressure up the long neck to the brain. This requires big muscular blood vessels packed with valves to prevent the blood from flowing back. Brachiosaurus's nostrils, like the huge corresponding 
nasal openings and its goal, were long thought to be located on the top of the head. Next, we have the parts of the Brachiosaurus. First, we have the skull. The skull of Brachiosaurus was small, and the nostrils were high on the middle of the head. Some paleontologists at first thought Brachiosaurus lived in water and used its nostrils like a snorkel. Instead, Brachiosaurus lived on dry land or along shorelines. It probably did not often go into water where the muddy bottoms would have been slippery and dangerous. Next is the neck. The neck of Brachiosaurus was up to about 10 meters, or 30 feet, long. It helped Brachiosaurus to eat the fresh leaves in the high trees, and it could also watch for any attacks from other dinosaurs. Next we have the teeth. Brachiosaurus was an herbivore and liked to eat the fresh leaves and the high trees. They had 52 total teeth, 26 on the upper jaw and 26 on the lower jaw. Next are the eyes. The eyes of Brachiosaurus were on the sides of its head, which helped it to scan for any incoming predators in the surrounding area. Even though there are no fossilized Brachiosaurus' hearts for us to understand, we believe Brachiosaurus was reasonably warm-blooded. Scientists believe in order to pump enough ox oxygenated blood to its brain and other body parts, Brachiosaurus should have a very big and strong heart, which may have been the size of a small car and it needed to pump blood at a consistent high pressure. Next are the lungs. Brachiosaurus had a huge body. It needed high supply of oxygen to its brain, muscles, and other organs. Unlike two-legged dinosaurs, such as Tyrannosaurus and Velociraptor, Brachiosaurus had more room for a large pair of lungs. So we believe that Brachiosaurus might not have had extra air sacs outside its lung. Next, we have the stomach. Based on the anatomy of the digestive system of living herbivores nowadays, Brachiosaurus should have a large stomach and might have had a few different compartments as a ruminant, like cows do. Next are the intestines. Brachiosaurus, like other living herbivores, they should have had long intestines for food digestion and nutrient absorption. Some microorganisms might live in the Brachiosaurus' intestine system to break down cellulose, fibers, and other polymers which cannot be digested in the stomach. Large intestines help to absorb salt and water from the food. Next is the ovary. The ovary was an organ which produced eggs. After mating with a male Brachiosaurus, female Brachiosauruses laid their eggs through cloaca in a nest. Brachiosaurus might lay its eggs, then just walked away and did not take care of its eggs. Next, we have the liver. Livers are present in vertebrates and some other animals. So, scientists believe Brachiosaurus also had a glandular organ, but in a very large size. This chemical factory played a major role in metabolism and had a number of other important functions in the Brachiosaurus's body. Next, we have the skeleton. Brachiosaurus is unsurprising to weigh from 30 to 80 tons and with the tallest mounted skeleton in the world. The skeleton of Brachiosaurus was very heavy and strong. Brachiosaurus had four strong, column-like legs to support its body weight. Last for the parts, we have the tail. Brachiosaurus' tail was long, but still relatively short for a sauropod. It was mainly for balancing its body. All right, and last of the information to read is the Q&A section. Question, what was the weight of a living adult Brachiosaurus? Since Brachiosaurus had already gone extinct, we can only come up with the most possible estimate by complicated calculations according to its skeleton size and structure. By most estimates, the average full-grown Brachiosaurus weighed in around 33 to 88 tons. Question, was Brachiosaurus cold-blooded or warm-blooded? Nowadays, most of the scientists believe Brachiosaurus was probably warm-blooded. It was because Brachiosaurus had to have a very large heart to pump blood all the way to its brain, which was in its head on top of a very long neck. Question, would Brachiosaurus take care of their babies? Scientists think Brachiosaurus might not have taken care of their babies. They believe Brachiosaurus just laid their eggs in rows, not in nests, probably while they were walking. Question, how many toes are on Brachiosaurus' feet? Brachiosaurus had large feet with five toes on each foot and had a claw on the first toe of each front foot. Question, what food did Brachiosaurus eat, and how much food did it need to eat a day? Brachiosaurus was an herbivore. It ate ginkgos, conifers, tree ferns, large cycads, and some other plants too. 
It might have eaten 200 to 400 kilograms or 440 to 880 pounds of plant matter daily. They would move when they ate all the food in one place. Question, how did Brachiosaurus defend themselves from enemies? Brachiosaurus probably did not have any enemies because it was so large. It could use its strong and long tail to whip away most attackers. It also had thick, leathery skin and clawed feet. Question, how long was the lifespan of a Brachiosaurus? Scientists believe Brachiosaurus could live up to 100 years. Question, why are the nostrils of a Brachiosaurus so high up on its head? Brachiosaurus' nostrils were on top of its head, which may mean it had a great sense of smell. Also, it could hide underwater from facing other enemies or the heat of the sunlight. And that is all the information to read in the instruction manual. Now, it's time for my thoughts on the assembly. Currently, this is the second 40 Vision anatomy puzzle I've gotten, and it's quite different from the frog one. The frog one has a couple holes in its back so you can see parts of the inside. This, however, is a half and half view. One side is completely covered with skin, and you can see the eye and the pattern of the skin. And the other side is a see-through plastic so you can see everything on the inside. So far, out of the two different views, I gotta say I love the half and half side. Don't get me wrong, the two-thirds view is pretty nice. You get to see the whole frog and it's almost like you cut holes into it in a way. But I don't know, the half and half is pretty nice. It can be a little tricky to get the legs inside the leg holes, the skeleton legs I mean. And of course making sure the halves snap together correctly, but once you get that done, it's honestly really cool looking. I think I like the half and half more because you can see everything. With the frog, I can only see what is meant to be shown. So for example, there was no frog skull in the kit. There was no frog skeleton foot or anything like that. It was mostly just the guts, which is fine, but I would have also loved to see the skeleton limbs and the head. But both have their benefits, but just personally, I like the half and half better. It was pretty easy to put together. The instructions were pretty clear. The only thing I technically struggled with was when it comes to the stomach, liver, kidneys, and intestines, they don't really attach to anything. The bones attach to other bones and other little holes, but the four parts I mentioned, oh, of course the heart and the lung as well, they don't attach to anything. They don't even attach to each other. So you kind of just have to hold them in place and put them inside the rib cage and hope they stay there. And they do, which is getting them to stay together while you're putting them in the ribcage can be a little tricky. Overall though, it was fun. There's a total of 42 pieces and they have a, like a little contest kind of thing. I'm not sure if a contest is the right word, but more so you can time yourself. It says the beginner is 16 minutes, average is 11 minutes, and advanced is eight minutes. This is only my second kit. I think it took me around 30-ish minutes. It's hard to say since the time I'm recording this audio and the video are a couple months apart, so I'm a little unsure, but I know it was definitely over 16 minutes, probably over 20 as well. All right, and I think that is it for this kit. I really enjoyed it. I can definitely see where you would take it apart several times and put it back together to try to get a better time or just compete with your friends or family members or whoever, really. It's almost like a different version of operation in a way, because you are putting back a skeleton and the insides. Except of course, if you touch the sides, there's no gonna be, there's no buzzing. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. And if you did, let me know in the comments below, what was your favorite Brachiosaurus fact? Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed. I will see you all in the next video. Bye.